Good morning. It is Wednesday, the 16th of February, 2022. Wednesday in the week of the Sunday called Septuagesima, the third before Lent. We're here in the rectory of St. John's Church for morning prayer, according to the 1928 prayer book, some bits of 1662. We're here to render thanks to God for the great benefits that we've received at his hands, to set forth his most worthy praise, to hear his most holy word, to ask those things which are requisite and necessary, as well for the body as the soul. But first, as scripture teaches us in sundry places, let us acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness with an humble, lowly, penitent, and obedient heart, to the end that we may obtain forgiveness of the same by his infinite goodness and mercy. Almighty and most merciful Father, we have erred and strayed from thy ways like lost sheep. We have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. We have offended against thy holy laws. We have left undone those things which we ought to have done, and we have done those things which we ought not to have done, and there is no health in us. But thou, O Lord, have mercy upon us, miserable offenders. Spare thou those, O God, who confess their faults, Restore thou those who are penitent according to thy promises declared unto mankind in Christ Jesus our Lord. And grant, O most merciful Father, for his sake, that we may hereafter live a godly, righteous, and sober life to the glory of thy holy name. Amen. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who desireth not the death of a sinner, but rather that he may turn from his wickedness and live, hath given power and commandment to his ministers to declare and pronounce to his people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. He pardoneth and absolveth all those who truly repent and unfeignedly believe his holy gospel. Wherefore, let us beseech him to grant us true repentance and his Holy Spirit, that those things may please him which we do at this present, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to his eternal joy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. O Lord, open thou our lips, and our mouth shall show forth thy praise. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the corners of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepared the dry land. O come, let us worship and fall down and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is the Lord our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Today, if ye will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation and as in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works. Forty years long was I grieved with this generation and said, it is a people that do err in their hearts, for they have not known my ways, and to whom I swear in my wrath that they should not enter into my rest. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Let us indeed today not harden our hearts, but hear his voice that we may know his ways and enter into his rest uh, the rest of him who is our maker and redeemer, our shepherd and king. 
The Psalms for the 16th day of the month at morning prayer begin on page 439. There's Psalms 79, 80, and 81. Psalm 79 is a lamentation over the destruction of Jerusalem uh, with a prayer for God to restore his people. It is a figure of a intercession for the church, so often uh, uh, harmed by external persecution and inward infidelity. O God, the proud, the heathen are come into thine inheritance. Thy holy temple have they defiled and made Jerusalem a heap of stones. The dead bodies of thy servants have they given to be meat unto the fowls of the air and the flesh of thy saints unto the beasts of the land. Their blood have they shed like water on every side of Jerusalem, and there was no man to bury them. We are become an open shame to our enemies, a very scorn and derision unto them that are round about us. Lord, how long wilt thou be angry? Shall thy jealousy burn like fire for ever? Pour out thine indignation upon the heathen that have not known thee, and upon the kingdoms that have not called upon thy name. For they have devoured Jacob, and laid waste his dwelling place. O oh, remember not our old sins, but have mercy upon us, and that soon, for we are come to great misery. Help us, O God of our salvation, for the glory of thy name. O deliver us, and be merciful unto our sins, for thy name's sake. Wherefore do the heathen say, Where is now their God? O let the vengeance of thy servants' blood that is shed be openly showed upon the heathen in our sight. O let the sorrowful sighing of the prisoners come before thee. According to the greatness of thy power, preserve thou those that are appointed to die. And for the blasphemy wherewith our neighbors have blasphemed thee, reward thou them, O Lord, sevenfold into thy bosom. So we that are thy people and sheep of thy pasture shall give thee thanks for ever, and will always be showing forth thy praise from generation to generation. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Psalm 80 continues in the same vein. It's a prayer for the restoration of uh, God's, uh, um, God's people after the destruction of the city um, and the temple. Uh, it's a bit of an Advent prayer. It has a lot of language of the Advent prayer, stir up and come and show thyself. Hear, O thou shepherd of Israel, thou that leadest Joseph like a flock, show thyself also, thou that sittest upon the cherubim. Before Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up thy strength and come and help us. Turn us again, O God, show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. O Lord God of hosts, how long wilt thou be angry with thy people that prayeth? Thou feedest them with the bread of tears, and givest them plenteousness of tears to drink. Thou hast made us very strife unto our neighbors, and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Turn us again, thou God of hosts, show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Thou hast brought a vine out of Egypt, Thou hast cast out the heathen and planted it. Thou madest room for it, and when it had taken root, it filled the land. The hills were covered with the shadow of it, and the boughs thereof were like a, the goodly cedar trees. She stretched out her branches unto the sea, and her boughs unto the river. Why hast thou then broken down her hedge, that all they that go by pluck off her grapes? The wild boar out of the wood doth root it up, and the wild beasts of the field devour it. Turn thee again, thou God of hosts, look down from heaven, behold and visit this vine, and the place of the vineyard that thy right hand hath planted, and the branch that thou madest so strong for thyself. It is burnt with fire and cast down, and they shall perish at the rebuke of thy countenance. Let thy hand be upon the man of thy right hand, and upon the son of man, whom thou madest so strong for thine own self. And so will not we go back from thee. Let us live, and we shall call upon thy name. Turn us again, O Lord God of hosts. Show the light of thy countenance, and we shall be whole. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.
Psalm 81, the mood shifts. It's a summons to festal commemoration of God's saving blessings, a challenge from God uh, to the obedience that we owe him as a return of gratitude. Sing we merrily unto God our strength. Make a cheerful noise unto the God of Jacob. Take the psalm, bring hither the tabret, the merry harp with the lute. Blow up the trumpet in the new moon, even in the time appointed and upon our solemn feast day. For this was made a statute for Israel and a law of the God of Jacob. This he ordained in Joseph for a testimony when he came out of the land of Egypt and had heard a strange language. I eased his shoulder from the burden and his hands were delivered from making the pots. Thou callest upon me in troubles and I delivered thee and heard thee what time as the storm fell upon thee. I proved thee also at the waters of strife. Hear, O my people, and I will assure thee, O Israel, if thou wilt hearken unto me, there shall no strange God be in thee, neither shalt thou worship any other God. I am the Lord thy God, who brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I shall fill it. But my people would not hear my voice and Israel would not obey me. So I gave them up unto their own heart's lusts, and let them follow their own imaginations. Oh, that my people would have hearkened unto me. For if, if, or if, if Israel had walked in my ways, I should soon have put down their enemies and turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him, but their time should have endured forever. I would have fed them also with the finest wheat flour and with honey out of the stony rock would I have satisfied thee. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Here we begin at the eighth chapter of the first book of Moses called Genesis. We're in the middle of, the very middle really, of the great account of the flood, the judgment of God upon a corrupt and wicked world, uh, and also uh, the salvation of Noah and his family. And uh, the narrative have brought us, it, in a certain way, the narrative echoes uh, for the reader, the experience that it describes of the rising waves, um, the waters prevailing, and uh, Noah and his uh, little band in the ark. And God remembered Noah. I see this is the turning point. And God remembered Noah and every living thing and all the cattle that was with him in the ark. And God made a wind to pass over the earth and the waters assuaged. The fountains also of the deep and the windows of the heaven were stopped and the rain from heaven was restrained. And the waters returned from off the earth continually, and after the end of the hundred and fifty days the waters were abated. And the ark rested in the seventh month, on the seventeenth day of the month, upon the mountains of Ararat. And the waters decreased continually until the tenth month. In the tenth month, on the first day of the month, were the tops of the mountains seen. And it came to pass at the end of forty days, that Noah opened the window of the ark which he had made, and he sent forth a raven which went forth to and fro until the waters were dried up from off the earth. Also he sent forth a dove from him to see if the waters were abated from off the face of the earth. But the dove found no rest for the sole of her foot, and she returned unto him into the ark, for the waters were on the face of the whole earth. Then he put it forth his hand and took her, and pulled her in unto him into the ark. And he stayed yet other seven days, and again he sent forth the dove out of the ark. And the dove came into him in the evening, and lo, in her mouth was an olive leaf plucked off. So Noah knew that the waters were abated from off the earth. And he stayed yet other seven days, and sent forth the dove, which returned not again unto him any more. And it came to pass in the six hundredth and first year, in the first month, the first day of the month, the waters were dried up from off the earth. 
And Noah removed the covering of the ark and looked, and behold, the face of the ground was dry. And in the second month, on the seven and twentieth day of the month, was the earth dried. Here endeth the first lesson. We're reading the Benedicite in parts, and uh, today we read the second part, beginning at the top, page 13. O let the earth bless the Lord, yea, let it praise him and magnify him forever. O ye mountains and hills, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye green things upon the earth, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye wells, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye seas and floods, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye whales and all that move in the waters, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye fowls of the air, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O all ye beasts and cattle, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O ye children of men, bless ye the Lord, praise him and magnify him forever. O let Israel bless the Lord, Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye priests of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye servants of the Lord, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye spirits and souls of the righteous, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. O ye holy and humble men of heart, bless ye the Lord. Praise him and magnify him forever. Let us bless the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. Praise him and magnify him forever. Amen. Here beginneth the 17th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, the account of the transfiguration, Christ's descent from the mountain, and the healing of the uh, epileptic boy, uh, scenes which are, of course, consecutive in, uh, um, uh, in Scripture, but uh, as in Raphael's great masterpiece, he's able to show what the scripture indicates their simultaneity what's happening at the top of the mountain and what's happening at the bottom and after six days jesus taketh peter james and john his brother and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart and was transfigured before them and his face did shine as the sun and his raiment was white as the light and behold there appeared unto them moses and elias talking with him then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were so afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man, kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he falleth into the fire, and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. 
For verily I say unto you, if ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth not out, but by prayer and fasting. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, and here's his second passion prediction, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. Here endeth the second lesson. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he hath visited and redeemed his people, and hath raised up a mighty salvation for us in the house of his servant David, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us, to perform the mercy promised to our forefathers, and to remember his holy covenant, to perform the oath which he sware to our forefather Abraham, that he would give us, that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear, in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation unto his people for the remission of their sins. Through the tender mercy of our God, whereby the day spring from on high hath visited us, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The words we've heard with our ears, let us believe with our hearts, and confess with our lips as we recite the Apostles' Creed, the creed of our baptism. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead, I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and with thy spirit. Let us pray. United in the confession of one faith, one Lord, one baptism, one God and Father of all, let us commend ourselves and each other and the whole church and people of God to his gracious and loving care. I bid your prayers for all sorts and conditions of men throughout the world, that God's ways may be known unto them in the gospel, his saving health among all nations. I bid your prayers for Christ's holy Catholic Church, militant here upon earth, that it may be so guided and governed by his Holy Spirit, that all those who call themselves Christians may be led into the way of truth, in the way of righteousness, and hold the... Uh, pardon me. Uh, hold the faith in unity of spirit, in the bond of peace, and in righteousness of life. I bid your prayers for this country of ours and all countries, and their peace, order, and good government, and the deliverance of the peoples of the world from misery, strife, and oppression. I pray especially for the uh, peace of the Ukrainian people, uh, their freedom from Russian invasion, subversion, or intimidation. Bid your prayers for the clergy and people of God's churches throughout the world, for the faithfulness of their witness and worship, especially those under persecution. Think particularly of the Christians of India this time. Um, and uh, for their fruitfulness and good works of hope and charity. Bid your prayers especially for um, Christian families um, and the ministry of uh, evangelization as they raise their children in the Lord's faith and fear, they raise their children to know and love God. I bid your prayers, especially for a confirmation class and its instructor, that they may indeed be stirred up to a lively uh, biblical faith. I bid your prayers for those who suffer in mind, body, or state, 
that they may have patience under their sufferings and a happy issue from all their afflictions. Uh, for those dealing with cancer and its therapies, those dealing with debilitating infirmity, chronic pain, cognitive impairment, mental illness, depression, the challenge of sobriety. Uh, for those who minister to the sick, mind and body, healthcare workers, all kinds, and caregivers. For women in childbirth, newborns and their parents, for children, women expecting children and children they're expecting, for the orphans, the abandoned, the abused, for the hungry, the homeless, the captive, and the refugee, for those who grieve, and for those who are dying. We remember before God those who've departed this life in the faith of Christ and our rest in him, that we with them may rise to glory. And this they, that being under the protection of the divine mercy, we may serve and please the Lord in everything that we do, being strengthened by his Holy Spirit and transformed into the likeness of his Son. That when he comes again in glory to judge the world, we may be found an acceptable people in his sight. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us, and grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the state, and mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. And do thy ministers with righteousness, and make thy chosen people joyful. O Lord, save thy people, and bless thine inheritance. Give peace in our time, O Lord, for it is thou, Lord, only that makest us dwell in safety. O God, may clean our hearts within us, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us. O Lord, we beseech thee favorably to hear the prayers of thy people, that we who are justly punished for our offenses may be mercifully delivered by thy goodness for the glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost ever, one God, world without end. Amen. O God, who art the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom standeth our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom. Defend us, thy humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in thy defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries, through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same, with thy mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings, being ordered by thy governance, may be righteous in thy sight. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Know ye not that they which run in a race run all, but one receiveth the prize? So run that ye may obtain. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible, uh, sorry, uh, and every man that uh, striveth for the mastery is temperate in all things. I therefore so run, not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beat the air. But I keep under my body, and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost, be with us all evermore. Amen. The good Lord order this day and your doings in his peace. Amen.